Welcome believers all over the world. We're going to try this again. We had a little technical difficulties and like our Wi-Fi had dropped. And so Miss Campbell caught it because she didn't get a notification, but hopefully everyone would get a notification. We got it. So we're going to wait till she get a notification. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're sticking to stay the course. This is the 10th teaching. We've been teaching this here because we want everybody to be excited about what God is doing now. I was flowing the first time and now I got to remember all the things that I said because it was said by the Spirit. But we just believe that this is the most anointed one that God gives us another chance to speak this year. So we want to encourage you. All the teaching is about stay the course. Now the question we ask, doesn't make any sense for us to do this teaching if you don't have a course. What? Something that you believe in God for that you can exercise and demonstrate and represent the kingdom of God by letting people see that you, we serve a God that is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we can ever ask or think. I believe God is a God that does things. We talked earlier before we went, had this dif difficulty is that Jesus was, a, was one that came demonstrating the gospel. You know, the scri scribes and the Pharisees, they talked it, but Jesus demonstrated. In other words, he said, the spirit of the Lord is up on me for God has anointed me to do some things, preach the gospel to the poor, set a liberty that are bruised, preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so he was always doing things. And so we should be a church of demonstration as well to show that God is a God of power. And it's just not about getting your name signed on the Lamb's Book of Life that you may enter into heaven. Now, we know that's definitely what we want to do. But in the midst, in the meantime, there is there's something that goes on in between from you being born again up until Christ comes back. And we talked about occupy. He says, occupy till I come back. In other words, we ought to be doing something. We should be reflecting the kingdom to the world so they can know that we serve a good God and they can look at us and see that we are the light some lamb and everybody want to run into it. You notice that uh, the, the scripture says, up until John the Baptist, the prophets were spoken and the prophets were declared and decreed. But then when Jesus came, the kingdom, then everybody tried to rush into the kingdom. Why? Because Jesus was demonstrating the kingdom. The prophets talked about the kingdom. Jesus demonstrated. And everybody was trying to get into the kingdom. We should be demonstrating the kingdom to a point where everybody's trying to get into it. Now, the problem we're having today is everybody don't want to come to the kingdom and everybody in the kingdom is trying to get out of the kingdom. That's not how it's supposed to be. We should be living right. life in such a way that the world looks at us and desires to be like us because we have a living, a true and living God mm -hmm. that manifests his word. He's a God that looks at us and knows that he, his thoughts towards us are peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. And so we want to be just like, be like our father and demonstrating the kingdom. So this is all this teaching is about is staying on course to encourage you to say, hey, there is something that you believe in God for. There is something that God right. said concerning a promise toward or concerning you and that you can rely on that promise. You can be like your father Abraham, prove him and count him faithful that promise that whatever he said, he's going to bring it to pass. And that in the meantime, we know that there's a process of time coming. That's what we've been teaching, uh, giving the example of the seed, seed time and harvest because it's a process. And I know there are sometimes we have miracles that happen and it happens immediately. But for the most part, God is trying to get us to uh, walk by faith. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a spiritual conference, uh, a, a conference for miracle signs and wonders that was done in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they invited, Fred, Fred Price just ended up going. He wasn't supposed to be one of the speakers, but just so happened, I guess somebody counseled, and they asked him to speak. And boy, when he got up and spoke, he just kind of told the truth. He says, now listen, we love miracle signs and wonders. He says, I have them in my ministry, but that's not what the believer is supposed to have. The believer is not supposed to be going around and praying and believing God for miracle signs and wonders. The, the believer is supposed to be walking by faith. And so in the midst of walking by faith, that is the norm. You're going to have a process of time. I believe when we preach miracles too much to the point to where we get people to expect them. And so when they don't happen immediately like they expect, they get discouraged. When we're not supposed the just should not live by miracles. We love them. I love them. Everybody loves them. But we, we're not to live by them. We're to live by faith. And in faith, there's a trying of your faith. There's a, uh, a maturing of your faith, a development of your faith. Right. And so that takes a process of time. And so that's how we understand how to lean on God, trust God, 
wait on God, knowing that he's faithful. And it doesn't matter because when you've done all the stand, therefore what? Stand there. some more. Stand therefore. And so the idea is this teaching is about to encourage the believer to, hey, don't get frustrated to God when your miracle don't happen miraculously immediately that you can trust God and through the process of I don't know why he does what he do. I don't. I don't know why God had to get a man to say, okay, you go tell Pharaoh this. God could have gave it to him in a dream like he did other Pharaohs, visited mm -hmm. him in a dream, spoke right. to them audibly. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he does it, but you know what? I'm yeah. glad he do it that way. Mm -hmm. He's more wise than I am. And so sometimes he just going to use us to intervene. As we're going to talk about a whole lot of things that don't question why it does things. Just get on the bandwagon and say, hey, yes, Lord. Yes. You got to get a yes, Lord, in your spirit. So whenever yeah. he says something, you just say, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the scratch your head, uh, uh, <laughs> why, why, why I got to do it that way? You know, you know what God said, mm -hmm. find somebody else, find somebody else. No. We live by faith. And so this whole course is to encourage you that we walk by faith. And I'm, I'm praying and believing that as we teach this, whatever you believe in God for, that this teaching is helping you stay on course, reminding right. you to stay encouraged, stay walking in faith, stay believing God, and that when it comes to pass, we'll begin to get uh, some testimonies of right. God did it. Yes. It has manifested it, it came to pass. You started out with, it shall come to pass. I shall hear whatsoever I say. Mm -hmm. And now in the process, we've gone through 10 lessons. And now you can say, hey, I got mine. Now I got, some, I got, now I got another course to believe God right. for. Amen. And then stay on yes. course for that. This is the same principle that you can use from one promise to the next promise, from one blessing to the next blessing, from one challenge to the next challenge. Mm -hmm. this, is, this word is a principle. It is a spiritual law, a spiritual principle that it works for everything. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, do you have a course? Do you have something that you believe in God for? Whether it's financial, spiritually, relational, whatever it is that you mm -hmm. believe in God for, find something. Now don't try to grab something that's too big for you. Mm -hmm. Find something that you can realistically believe God for, that you can believe in for. There's something in you that hits you that just you just know that I just believe that this God's favor toward me will cause this to come to pass. Right. I mean, it, and, or if you're in a, a place where you have no other turn but God, if it's a, mm -hmm. a gross sickness, you have no other turn but God. The doctors don't have any answers. They've come to the end of their ropes. They've done all they know how to do. They've given it over. Then they tell you, then you have to rely on a higher power. Then you have no other choice but to believe God right. and walk in faith. Listen, mm -hmm. walk in faith. Yes. I look at it this way. You already know what the odds are against you. Mm -hmm. Now let's just focus on the odds that's for you. And he says, I'm more than the world against you. And if God be for you, Ooh. who can be against you? So mm -hmm. I think the odds are better in your favor when you look toward God, look toward the hills where come with your help. Mm -hmm. All of your help come from the Lord. Say that with me. All, All my, my help, help comes, comes from, from the, the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Lee Hezekiah Walker turned that into a song. Father, we thank you right yes. now for the opportunity thank to you, minister Jesus. your word to your people. We pray right thank now that in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, your word will go forth and have free course. Yes. We do bind every hindering force, every spirit, yes. every God, every wickedness that will kind of hinder the word, Lord, Lord that Lord, those that are Lord. hearing it do not hear it correctly. We bind up every wicked yes. spirit, of oh God. For Jesus said, take heed what you hear, and he said, take heed how you hear. Yes. So therefore, Father, we thank you right now and thank declare and decree that those that hear the word, hear it correctly yes. in the spirit, that they will take it, God, and it will sink down to the hearts, the, the root of uh, the soul of their hearts and take root and bring forth fruit, God, a hundred, sixty, and thirtyfold in the mighty name of Jesus, and we give you praise. Yes. If there be any sick among us, O oh God, I pray that the word will go forth and be yes. healing, O oh God, Thank to their soul, their spirit, and their body in yes. Jesus' mighty Lord name. Jesus. If there's any, O oh God, that is believing mm -hmm. you for a financial blessing, I pray, Lord, that the word will bring forth wisdom, instructional knowledge, O oh God, and insight, O oh God, Thank that the light will go off, O oh God, the revelation knowledge will come, O oh God, a prophetic word will cause them, O oh God, to receive, O oh God, that you say you give witty and vengeance to those, O oh God. Let this spirit be opened up now to receive in Jesus' name if they know exactly what to do, O oh God, to bring forth the harvest that they need in Jesus' name. We pray and we give you praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Glory. Stay at the course. Mm -hmm. Do we have a course? Do you have a course that you believe in God for? Just find something. Yes. I heard Bill Whistler say when he started believing God, he said he started believing God for a tie. And it just starts somewhere. <laughs> and when you find out he's faithful, he begins to <laughs> Uh, um, show you a track record of his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. David with the lion and the bear. 
He was able to face Goliath. I don't know what it is you're facing, but go back and find those testimonies. Those testimonies are for you to overcome. We are overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So those testimonies is to, for your testifying mm -hmm. whenever you're faced with a, 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 an opposition. Not just for you to tell people what God has done, but to remind you of what he's done. Because how quickly we forget right. what he's done. Mm -hmm. And then we go talking sideways and, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. You said that the last five times God brought you out. And he brought you out. Wouldn't it be nice if you just get your lift to line up with God and say, you know what? God got me out of that dilemma. He paid the light bill last month. He paid the rent the month after the month, month before that. You know what? I'm not going to worry about what I'm going to eat, drink, mm -hmm. or put on. For my Heavenly Father already knows what I have need of. Therefore, I'm seeking Him. What, do you have, what would you have me to do? What course have you laid before me mm -hmm. that for me to believe in? And yeah. then I'm going to stand on it and believe Him to be faithful. Now, we have been talking about getting to the seed, and I believe we're going to get to it. The seed being an example of um, explaining the law of progression. The law of progression, because I think that I, I believe with all my heart that it's more so a normal life for a believer to see God move in progressions. And you see it all throughout our life. You know, a baby is born, he's not born on a door, he's born a baby. And he grows up in the process of time. Even developing in the womb, it takes nine months for that development to be to full term. Then the baby is delivered, and then through that, the baby don't get up and start running and playing football and basketball. <laughs> he lays on his back, getting mobility. Everything is a process of time, and you begin to see them grow, 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 and until adult and they mature. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's what I believe the life of believer is. It's a law. It's a life of progression. And through that, we are supposed to be maturing from faith to faith and from glory to glory, getting closer to God, not more discouraged and confused. We got more Christians now that's discouraged and confused and say, you know what? You know, when I first got born again, I could just think about God doing something, and he did it. You want to know why? Because you was a babe, and you didn't have the faculties to do those things. But he believed that after a while, you come to full term, you should not be opening up your mouth like a baby bird, but you should be grabbing some light bread and bologna and putting together and making a sandwich and then feeding yourself. Mm -hmm. Paul said, you know, we should not be eating, you know, still on milk. We should be forgetting about the principles of the matter. We should be going on to perfection. Right. We should be now, instead of going on to my, I need a word. I just need to hear something. You're supposed to be to the point where you're giving a word now. You're encouraging people. Mm -hmm. You're praying. You're right. laying hands Amen. on people. I'm waiting on pastor to come by. Me. No, no, no. You should be getting up going and helping the pastor go visit. Mm -hmm. All of this comes through the maturing of the saints. And so how I don't I don't have strong faith, okay? While you don't have strong faith, is it because you're not exercising? If you stick two men side by side and one exercise and one don't, who's going to be the stronger one? The one that exercise. In other words, it's the one that do something. So if you really want God to increase your faith, get to the point to where you're not depending on anybody else. Not the, not the pastor shall live by faith, but the just shall live by faith. The believer shall live by faith. And everyone here that's born again is a believer. They should be walking by faith. The same works that the bishop, the apostle, the prophets, the evangelists, and the teachers do, you should be doing it as a believer. And that's one thing I love about God is a whosoever. So, mm -hmm. he, ooh, my pastor is so anointed. Okay, what about you? Because it's not enough to brag about your pastor. You are just the same, watch this, the same spirit that's in your pastor is in you. Right. I'll go further than that. Paul said it this way, if the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now dwell in you, he shall also quicken your mortal body. So you shouldn't have any excuse because this Holy Spirit doesn't come in degrees. He is powerful all by himself. Now the only way he only works two degrees is to the degrees that we allow him to. Mm -hmm. 
the degrees that we allow him to, but he's full, he's full of power. There is no uh, increasing in the power of the Holy Ghost. He is power. That is it. And the, and the Bible says, and when they went about doing healing, it say, and the power was there to heal. Mm -hmm. It wasn't some power was there. It, mm -hmm. The power was there. Look at your neighbor and say, I got the power. I got, I got the, the power. power. I got the power. He yeah. is the power. He's the Holy Spirit in me. And we just have to rely. Mm -hmm. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus is resonating on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. Now, so as a man thinketh, so is he. So as a man thinketh, so, so is he. Means. You doubt what you have, you don't have it. Because the Spirit of God doesn't work in doubt. He works in faith. And they that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. You've got to know him. The Bible said, and they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits in his name. Flip that. If you, if you don't know him, I know the Lord. No, no, he's not talking about that. He's talking about intimacy. It's not just enough to know of him, but this is what he'll do. Yes. Convinced that this is what he'll do. J Jacob, uh, Joshua was, was convinced in what God would do. When they got to the battle of Ai, with just a few said, wait a minute, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have lost this because I know God and I know that we're God's people. And if God delight in us, we're supposed to win. Something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And so all of this is to let you know that the God you serve, you born to win. It was no other, you, you were yes, born to win. win. And when you, when, and when you live in a life of a losing, this, I say a life losing, because there's going to be some battles where we're tried, but we keep losing, 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 losing. You got to stop and say, wait a minute, something is not right. I got to figure out how to turn this thing around. That's when you start seeking God and that you seek him with your whole heart. Guess what? Mm -hmm. You seek, you're going to find. The Bible is, is, is just plain. Uh, you know, don't stop and complain. You never find answers. If you spend 20 years of complaining and say, you know what? I, I've, been, I've been seeking the Lord for 20 years. No, stop. Have you been seeking the Lord or have you been complaining? Because there's a big difference. Because if you seek, you're going to find. If you complain, he's, he's going to, he can't stand it. He, you, you're going to, what you call that when you, when, um, you know, you see some oil and then you repel. Yeah. yeah. C complaining and murmuring repels God. But, but guess what happens? Praise, he inhabits. Mm -hmm. Praise and thanksgiving and adoration, he inhabits. Murmuring and complaining and doubt and unbelief, he, it repels him. Mm -hmm. So if you want him to come in on the scene, you got to do those things that bring him in. Seek him. Speak well of him. God, I know that this is you. I know that you, your desires and the, the thoughts toward me are peace and not of evil to give me expected end. Mm -hmm. You be accusatory and say, well, I just don't know. Where is the Lord? <laughs> now you think about that. Who wants to hear that? No. Nobody wants to hear that. Yeah. But the idea of, 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 of speaking well of him, declaring who he is, magnifying mm -hmm. him. When you magnify him, he comes in. When you praise him, he comes in. When you declare who he is and speak well of him, he comes in. So, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So, you got something? Well, just on that note, uh -huh. um, you know, when it comes to um, just retraining and just making a transition in thought or confession of faith, because mm -hmm. we, he says, our confession of faith has a great recompense of reward and so uh, I was talking to um, I believe Miss Farmer is Glenda is on here today and um, one of the things sometimes we we will sing on the phone and she'll she'll say oh Lord help me you know help me and then I thought about sometimes whenever I'm asking for help in the kitchen <laughs> and then you know do well no <laughs> ahead, the thing ahead. is sometimes it's just like okay we already know the things in the process of what we call cleaning the kitchen or cooking or prepping the food or however you you chose and you and when I said I needed help I wanted at first I thought in my mind that well if you do this or do that but you just took it without saying anything to me took the rotisserie chicken and then he began to debone it okay I was just like okay well if he does that and he do, does both chickens then I can go ahead on the slice everything else up that I need to make the gumbo mm -hmm. okay well sometimes when it when it when we're asking God to do something 
we set an order that we think how he ought to come. Mm -hmm. And we just keep crying, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. And, you know, and this is like the Lord saying, well, what, daughter, what do you think that I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Because you physically don't see anything. And that is where your confession of faith comes in because you hold fast. And in the midst of it, what you would say is, Lord, I thank you mm -hmm. for helping me. And I receive your intervention, even though I may not understand how you're coming, but I know that you're already, you know, in other words, in the mix on my behalf. So we begin to praise him and we change it as if like not to act like God is way off somewhere and you waiting on him to arrive, you know, and knock on the door. No, he said, I am so close to you. I'm, I'm nigh, even at the mm -hmm. Mentioning of my name at the at the door of thy mouth, and so I always I so each time I, I God or the Holy Spirit just brings me into remembrance of some things when I feel like I want to fret in a situation because what the pressure for time or a deadline or what we think of when God is not moving because we can't feel Him, mm -hmm. you know, or we can't see Him. So God wants us to get out of the feeling in the in the the senses. And have a knowing deep down in confidence that what? He is always here. And just like Jesus said, I have the confidence of knowing that my father, what? He always hears me. Therefore, I have what? The, the petitions that I ask so, for. Let me show you something. On that note, when you says knowing, go back to what we said. The just shall live by faith. I, I look at a lot of people that try, try things. And I look at the difference between those that fail and those that succeed. And the key is those that succeed have made a decision to make it a lifestyle. Whether it's losing weight, whether it's starting a business, whether it's being in a marriage, there are some people say, divorce is not an option. That's right. So when they make that decision, or I'm going to lose this weight because I'm not gonna, trying to get ready for the summer, or get ready to get in a swimsuit, or get ready for a school reunion. No, this is gonna be a lifestyle. So therefore they don't try things. They say, this is a lifestyle, so steady is the pace that wins the race. I'm gonna make up my mind, this is how I'm gonna do it. This is how it's gonna be from here on out. And guess what, they're successful in doing it. Because guess what, there are some failures along the way, there are some hiccups along the way, but it doesn't matter because, hey, I just keep going. And if I keep going, I'm gonna have the, right. the good results. And so that's like with anything. So when you're talking about living by faith, you make up your mind. I am going to be healed. I am going to prosper. There's no other way. I, I don't know how long it's going right. to take, but it doesn't. When you've made up your mind that it's going to be a lifestyle, time doesn't even matter anymore. Right. Because whether you get what you believe in for manifested today, tomorrow, 10 years down the road, or when Jesus Christ comes back, it doesn't matter because what? I'm still going to be living by faith. Right. And so, Amen. so yes, when, when you make up that mind and have that strong constitution, Amen. guess what? It does change the way you talk. It does change the way you think. You're not flip-flopping back and forth. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to make it. No, you ain't. You, 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 you have not determined yet. You have not determined to make it a lifestyle. You have not determined to live by faith because Ill, your mouth will line up with eternity. I look at the way. So if you're going to talk about lifetime, like eternity. Yes. So guess what? I have no other choice but to speak the right thing, yes. speak the right word stay with God saying because there is no other option so therefore to doubt and, and have unbelief it's, it's not an option mm -hmm. the just shall live, live by faith and so there's no other alternative so guess what now my words can't help but line up I can't speak anything contrary to the word of God because what I am I have set the thing I have dialed it to to see that mm -hmm. manifestation of eternity is coming to pass when he comes back, mm -hmm. he says, will I find any faithful? When he comes back, he can't help but find me faithful because I made up my mind. This is my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Nothing but to speak what God yes. says in his word. So I want to I want to get to Genesis 1 because I want to show you something. I want to show you something that has a whole lot to do with the word that we're talking about tonight. The theme we've been teaching about, stay the course. Mm -hmm. Our theme for tonight, is it good? Is it good? So what I want you to do is I want you to read Genesis 1, 11 and 12. This is the first thing we're talking about, just seeing how God set the law of progression up in dealing with right. sowing and reaping and seed time and harvest. So just read it. We read it one time, but we want to read it again to, okay. to just kind of develop it. 
Genesis 1, verses 11 through 12. Everything is in the sea. Everything is in the sea. Now, that's not the scripture. That's just a thing saying everything is in the seed. Everything starts that way. We did a little contest and talked about what came first, chicken and egg, but we're going to get into the, the meat of it now. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his, his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, when I was meditating upon, you know, taking a lesson further, this jumped out at me. Every time I saw God as far as bringing forth the creation, there's two phrases that he kept saying. He'd say something, but here's what it was. Here's what happened, and the scripture will say, "And it was so." That's the first thing. So. God said, the scripture says, "And it was so," to let us know that God had what He said, mm -hmm. and it was so. And it wasn't just enough right. for it to be so. Yeah. Yeah. The second part, the one, the really got me first is when He says, "And God saw that it was good." Yes. And God saw that it was good. Mm -hmm. He said something. He looked at it, it was revealed, it was manifested, and then God said, hmm, that's good. Is it good? The thing that you have been believing, God, the thing that you have been saying, the thing that's been manifesting in your life, can you look at it and say, that's good? Amen, that's good. That's, that's Thank good. You, Lord. That's good. If you Amen. can't look at it and say that it's good, mm -hmm. then you need to do one or two things. You need to stop saying it. Or change what you say. Mm -hmm. So this is what I say. This is what I'll, I'll say. If you don't like what you see, change what you say, mm -hmm. because you're having what you're saying. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care if you call me a bald faced <laughs> liar. I'm telling you, That's we right. are having what we say, or else Jesus is alive. He said, "When you stand praying, believe you receive, and ye shall have what you say." Yes. You're going to have what you say because I'm, I'm going to tell you this here. Out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speak, I guarantee you, you can say whatever you want to say. You can be pretty in church for just a little while. But when you're caught off guard, when you're just speaking out subconsciously, un unconsciously, you're going to be saying what you really believe. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. I am blessed and highly favored in church. Mm -hmm. But when your butt get in a fire, when you get in a trial and a test and yeah. a tribulation and a fight, I'm telling you what's in you going to yes, come yes. out. And yes. if the word of God is not coming out, if you're murmuring and complaining, you're talking about how bad it is, why things don't ever work for me, I can't never get anything to happen for me, doors don't ever open for me, that's coming out of you because that's what you believe. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. Turn to Proverbs 18, Proverbs 18, 21. Uh, just, just turn to Proverbs 18, 21. Mm -hmm. I've got to tell you about that one. Uh, 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 uh. So, so you can say whatever you want to say. You do it. I've done it. If I'm not careful, continue to do it. We got to get it down in us. And I'm telling you, you can say whatever you want. Whatever you keep perpetuating out of your mouth is going to keep happening in your life. If the sower sows the word in Mark 4 and 14, if the sower sows the word and we understand that the word is a seed, then yes. what you're sowing in the soil of your heart is going to produce that. And out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speak, you're going to have what you say. So if you don't like what you see and you can't, then what you see ain't good. We got to change what we're saying. It's got to be a reality in us. And like, like I said, until we get to the place where it is a lifestyle, and you say that I have, I deemed this, uh, 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 that this is an eternity. That until Jesus Christ come back, I'm gonna stand on His word. I'm gonna walk in faith, and I'm gonna believe God for all of His promises, which are yea and amen. And you don't change. You don't relent. You don't repent from it. You stand on it, no matter what. Now what it says now, listen to this very carefully. You, you can take this to the bank. This is the word of God. This ain't no, uh, uh, um, what they call it, um, that old crazy stuff they be talking about, positive oh, thinking and all that kind of stuff. This ain't no new age. This is Bible, okay. baby. What it say? Death and life. Stop. Say it again. Death and life. Say it again. Death and life. Do you hear what it says? Death and life. Go ahead. 
are in the power of the tongue. Not just in the tongue, but in the power of the tongue. And go ahead. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Let me break that down and tell you what that means. You're going to say what's coming out of your heart. And you might say, I don't love that. I don't love what I have. No, but you love to say what you have. Okay. If you love to say the negative stuff, well, how do I know? I don't love saying that with him. Question is, why do you say it? If you don't love the things that you're saying that's contrary to the word of God, can I ask you a question? Why are you saying it? Mm -hmm. You want to know why you're saying it? Because the devil makes it easy because you're still governed by your flesh and your flesh is screaming out and talking when the word of God is null and void and your spirit is being choked and saying what the word says. And you got a lot of people saying, well, if I say that there, I'll be lying. No, if you say that, you'll be saying the word of God because right. <laughs> we, it's so easy to say negative that we curse the car, we kick the tires, we talk about the dog, we, you, you make me sick. Let, let, let me ask you a question. If Miss Vicky did something to upset me, and I said, you make me sick. Now, the, re the truth was, you made me upset. Mm -hmm. You made me mad. Mm -hmm. But she looked and said, Negro, you ain't sick. You, 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 I, what, what, you don't have no fever. You're not throwing up. <laughs> you, you're not sick. So, right. so to say that would, it would be what? A lie. Yeah. So, so why is it so easy to say that? As, a, as opposed to saying what God says in his mm -hmm. word. So the Bible right. says there is no contradictory in the word of God. When you say the word of God, somebody say, well, you said by his stripes you were healed. That's a lie. You ain't healed. No, that's what the words say. Now, you calling God a lie? The book say let every man be a lie and God be the truth. Mm -hmm. so, so you calling God a lie? The word says by his stripes I was healed. I were healed. So, so you right. calling God a lie? Oh, oh no, I wouldn't call God a lie then. Well, then why don't you agree with me? If two shall agree on earth concerning anything, it shall be done to the Father. I believe what you're looking at will be happening, will be healed a whole lot faster and manifested if you just believe with me. Mm -hmm. Instead of being religious in your flesh, speaking what the flesh says and say, hey, I agree with you on that. By his stripes, you were healed. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, with you with that. All of your needs are supplied according yes. to his riches and glory. Yes, I agree with you on that. He shall do abundantly above. He shall do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. I agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. I, we we gonna speak nothing but the right. word of God. That's so right. help us. That's it. It's nothing but the word of God. Yes. And so, if we look at what God said, He said something. He waited for the manifestation. He looked for it to come to pass, mm -hmm. and it was so. <laughs> It works for us too. You don't want to say it. Right. It works for us, but it's always the negative. Man, nothing good ever happens for me. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Nothing good ever happened for you. Mm -hmm. And it was so. Yeah. Difference is, it ain't good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Just, um, no, it, it just reminds me of, <laughs> of the game we play. You know, if these were wrote, you know, we say, He loves me, you know, mm -hmm. when things are good. When we go through a trial, He loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. Either you're blessed or you're cursed. You're right. You know. So we got to make up our mind and settle it in our heart. Every time, in the good times, he loves me. When I'm going through trials, he loves me. When I can't feel him, he loves me. Mm -hmm. You know, so no matter what or where I am, if I make my bed in hell, somebody said he's there. Mm -hmm. He loves me. Let me let me show you, you something. Know, let, so me, let me share something with you. Um, I got this revelation, and it comes to a relationship. One of the things that I learned not to be with God is religious. Yes. God wants a relationship. And so I know that there's an acknowledgement of things. And so I don't judge things and I just pray people don't judge me. Yeah. And this is what I mean by that. The, when we look at the scripture, if we really hear it and take it to heart and walk therein, God, that, that, that's account to us for righteousness. Now, there used to be a time to do everything I did, I would just pray. You know, like we get to travel. Yeah. We pray. Right. Lord, you know, we pray for traveling exactly. grace and everything like that. Right. And so there was a time when I said, okay, we did that there. And it's the acknowledgement of God. So when people ask to still do it, they say acknowledging God. I don't say anything. But then God took it deeper with me and says, okay, 
When I heard the scripture say, it says, mm -hmm. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. That became such a reality to me that I yes. started walking in it day by day. Yes. So now I'm, I constantly Ooh, see myself yes. in his spirit. I constantly see myself in his presence. I never see a time when I'm not in his presence. So, so listen to me carefully because I don't want to be judged and I don't want to feel like I'm judging anybody else. So if I'm constantly walking with him, he never leave me nor forsake me. Guess what? Me and him already got it fixed when I get in the car. Me and him already got it fixed when I'm driving down the street. Me and him already got it fixed when I make it back to the house. When I'm even in my bedroom, me and him got it fixed. It's like we're constantly together. I don't leave home without him. That's right. Because I have received it as a reality. So I know sometimes when I get in my car, some people say, that joker, he didn't even pray for traveling grace. And I, I say, well, I hope yes, you're never, I, I never, but I never, I hope <laughs> never, never ask me that because I like, I have to share with him because I don't want to be judgmental to them. It's just that he took me somewhere deeper. And when he said that, hey, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Then I heard Kenneth Copeland said, he said, he did the same thing. He gave her, Lord be with me, Lord be with me. He said, stop, he said, stop that foolishness. Didn't I tell you mm -hmm. I'll never leave you nor forsake you? And so he changed his, his prayer. prayer. So yes. the idea is that. Amen. Praying without yeah. ceasing. There is a the people don't believe this. There is a way you can pray without ceasing. There is a way that you can always pray. I, I don't like the term that people say practicing the presence of Jesus. The idea is when you have a knowing is yes, in you that's it. That's that He's it. always with me. Mm -hmm. He's Emmanuel, God in me. Yes. We still, you know, we are still pray because uh, out of an acknowledgement, so that it doesn't seem, you know. Yeah. Not dead right to people like oh they don't, they don't even pray, <laughs> and sometimes we'll do it for that sake of that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I, 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 I'm leery of doing it because it makes me feel like I'm acknowledging that He's not with me, and I got to say, "Hey Lord, hey, hey." And to me, it's like I'm, I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, "Tim, when did you say when when did you acknowledge I'm not right. with you?" So it's a difference Thank in you. hearing yes, the word Lord. and making that word a reality in you. When I say that. Mm -hmm. I just know that he's my healer. I don't worry about sickness. And, and please don't take this the wrong way. And I know that the enemy is always looking for an opportunity to, to test you. Mm -hmm. I've been tested and tried so many times. Right. Not because of who I am. <laughs> no, not because of the faith that I have. I heard people teach this. It says, Jesus said, have faith in God. What he was saying was have the God kind of faith. I don't take no chance on that. Because I don't want to say I could ever get to the place where I have the God kind of faith. But what I can say for 100% sure for a fact that I can have faith in my God. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. faith that I can say that, wait a minute, yeah, he's so. able to do exceeding abundant above all that he can ever ask or think. Mm -hmm. He's able to heal to the utmost. He's able to deliver to the utmost. That is an assurance and a knowing in me. Not because of who I am. When I was yet a sinner, he died for me. So mm -hmm. I was nobody. Right. And if I was a nobody and he died for me, how much more so if I would live for him, how he would even pour more grace up on me. So it's not about who I am, but it's about all about who he is. Mm -hmm. And I have that confidence in who he is. So right. therefore, he is my protector. He is my provider. He is my deliverer. He is my strong tower. He is my battle axe. He is my shelter in the time of storm. He is my lid of yes. the valley. He is my bright and morning star. Yes. He's all of those things. And when I acknowledge him as being those things, I don't have time to murmur. I don't have time to complain. I don't have time to fret. I don't have time to murmur. My God is sufficient. He is El Shaddai. The breasted one and everything I need is in him. In him yes. I live, move, and have my being. Mm -hmm. So I can never see myself disconnected without God. So if there come a time I don't read the word, I'm not, I don't beat myself up because he is the word. And if he's the word and the word lives in me, the word is in me. If I forget to say a prayer when I get up in the morning, I don't beat myself because guess what? If I'm constantly in dialogue with him, then I don't miss a beat. So the whole idea is getting to the place where you are constantly in dialogue with him. I'm always asking God, what can I do? God, what shall we do? Lord, what is this here? Uh, we're, we're communicating yes. constantly. I get, uh, you know, I get a lot of you know, insight from him, revelation from him, just by communing with him daily, mm -hmm. constantly. Not, I'm talking right. about even watching the television, mm -hmm. watching the television, communing with him. How can you do that? How can you do that? I thought that was crazy until I heard uh, Pastor, uh, uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua says, 
Whatever he's doing, he's always communing with God. And I said, you know what? I thought I was the only one that was crazy because I'd watch a movie and get revelation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I would watch something and get revelations. Man. And it's always about God's relationship to man. Mm -hmm. God's relationship to man. Right. I, everything you see, when you, begin, when you begin to see things like that, the relationship, how, the things that you see examples of, how does that relate to God and man? That relationship, he desires to have that relationship. And that brings me closer together with him. Right. Closer together with him. Because I said, man, that's man, how me and God should be. That's how our relationship should be. That's how our relationship is. Mm -hmm. And it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. There can never be, to me, never be a disconnect where I say, okay, God, I'm going to put you off right now. I'll come see you at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I'll come see you at 6 o'clock. I'll meet you in the morning. That, that doesn't compete with me. Mm -hmm. it's, he's, he's with me 24-7. I, 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 there, there's no way I can go without him. So if I'm driving in a car and, and you say, well, Tim, you didn't, you didn't pray. Oh, oh, well, because I'm constantly in prayer. You know, mm -hmm. my mind is constantly going. And I love road trips because that's when we commune the most. I pop a tape on and halfway listen to the tape because I'm studying hearing what he's saying. Mm -hmm. All of that come with living by faith. And then it'll get to the point to where it brings such a trust in him that you just know. I just know that things are supposed to work for my good. I'm just, right. I'm just supposed Amen. to win. Yes. If we look in Genesis 1, 27 and 8, well, I don't want to go there, but just read it for your own spiritual enrichment and edification. Then he tells us to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish. And then it says this, and God blessed them. Mm -hmm. In other words, he empowered them to do exactly what he commanded them to do. God has blessed us right. for the purpose of, of seeing come to pass the things that he's spoken of your life. Now, I know that in the process of time, that some things are going to happen. You know, there are some chaos that happens as things come together. And I want to I use Ezekiel as an example. Turn to Ezekiel uh, 37 and 1. We're going to read 1 through 14. It's a lot of reading, but I need you to hear this because this is going to set you free. This is going to set your faith on fire. This is going to get you excited. You might not even get any sleep tonight because this is going to be burning in your spirit, in your soul. It's going to be like fire shut up in your bones. Amen. Telling Lord. you, you get this. You grab a hold to this here. This is, I, believe, I believe it's going to be prophetic tonight to, for you to get this because I believe this is, you have come unto this teaching for such a time as this and God is about to bring forth the word for such a time as this for you that are listening and I'm telling you it's going to be for a right word and a right, uh, in a, in a right season fitly spoken for you to receive. So just listen to this here very carefully. Like I said, in the midst of what you believe in God for and the thing coming to pass, there's going to be some chaos and some, some noise. Just like when people build in the house, they build in the house right beside you. That noise they make and it keeps you up. But eventually, that all that noise produces something that people can live in that brings forth some great neighbors that y'all connect together mm -hmm. and, and form the greatest friendship that you may ever have. But before that all came to pass, there was some noise that got on your nerves. And there are some, there are some relationships right now that are getting on your nerves while you believe in God for it to come to pass. You got some children that's getting on your nerves while you believe in God to deliver them. There are some people on your job that's getting on your nerves while you believe in God for a new one. I believe in God for a promotion. I believe in God for, for, for a business. There, there's, there's some things that go in between that, that, that's, that's chaotic and full of noise and full of distress and full of discouragement. But guess what? That is part of the process. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that mature you. Those are the things that educate you. Those are the things that instruct you. Those are the things that make you better. So that when you get to a place, you're equipped to handle the promise. Right. Listen, in other words, you're equipped to handle the promotion. So just let's, let us walk through Ezekiel, talking about the dry bones. And you've heard the story, but I want you to listen to it with a fresh new ear. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 37, you want verses 1 through, what, one through 14. Okay, verses 1 through 14. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of 
the valley which was full of bones. Full of bones. Nothing but just bones. And right now we may feel like nothing in our lives is just bones. Nothing together. Just I got so many bones. How many of you feel like you got just a bunch of bones in your life? <laughs> and nothing seems to work. You know, that your children are bones. Your job is bones. Your, your body is bones. Your, your finances is bones. It's nothing just working. Everything is just nothing but bones. Just full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many very there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Worthless. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Hold up. Now the question is, this is this is this is gonna be a prophetic word for you tonight. God asked the question, yeah. is there possibilities? Yeah. In what you believe in God for, is it a possibility? Whatever, your finances are jacked up. God's question to you, hey, is it a possibility that your finances can be fixed? You're sick in your body. Is it a possibility that you can be healed? Son of man, you see all of this destruction. Can these dry bones live? Mm. Go ahead. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. He put it on God. In other words, he said, I believe what you believe. And guess what? God's going to give him a commandment. Go ahead. And again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Okay, now why didn't God just, just make the bones come to life? Mm. He told the man of God, you say something. Because it's what you say that's going to come to pass. Oh, so I'm God. telling you right now. Whether it's the dry bones of your dead relationship, your children, you say to those bones, you say what you desire. You say what the word of God says concerning yeah. that. Not just what you say, what does the scripture say? You and your whole household shall be saved. Grab that, that word, prophesy that over your family. And God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You take that word prophesy that over your finances and the Lord thy God shall heal thee by his stripes you were healed you take that word and prophesy over Amen. your body yes you take what God said and say you already say God you know so when God give you what the word says you already know it works for him guess what you put it in your mouth you prophesy and it'll work for you God could have said it dry bones there but he said no no son of man you say mm -hmm. and I'm telling you tonight you say don't let Causing your mouth to say the right things. Right. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the food of it. If you don't like what you see, change what you say. Start saying what God says mm -hmm. in His Word. You already got Glory. His Word. Say His Word, then mm -hmm. you prophesy that. Prophecy, you, know, you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. Prophesy means declare, decree a thing. Take what God says and declare it. Take yes. what God says and decree it. You make sure that's the only thing that come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. Okay, keep going. And ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Watch this here. God didn't just miraculously make the whole body come to, come to be. He says, I'm going to do it by steps and by processes. I'm going to bring the bones together, send you, then I'm going to take the flesh, and then I'm going to cover the flesh with skin, and then I'm going to breathe. That was a process of time. The just shall live by faith. See, we just want to create a body. No, no, God says there's still, Thank I'm still Lord. trying to teach you Glory. how to walk by faith. And you got to say it. So the, so the man of God had to say the bones come together. The man of God had to say, send you, now you be formed. The man of God had to say, now flesh come on the bones. Then the man of God had to say, now flesh, uh, skin cover the flesh. All of that was done. Now keep reading. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Watch. You are commanded tonight to prophesy. You are commanded tonight to open up your mouth. Stop saying all the things you don't like. Or oh, you know what? Find you somebody and say, listen to me. If I don't say the word of God, slap me in my mouth. <laughs> Some of us need to be slapped in the mouth. Say, say listen, wow. say, say, you know what? I believe you received that. Get somebody to get you to stop talking crazy. Mm -hmm. I believe you receive that. I'm a, I agree with you that that come to pass. I agree that you never have a door open under you. You go around talking about, you know what? Nothing good ever happens for me. You need to find somebody and say, you know what? I come in agreement with you. I pray that nothing ever good happens for you. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you that'll start causing you to stop talking crazy. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> or or I, 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 I always get sick. You know what? I come in agreement. I pray you get sick and die. I come in agreement with you right now. I guarantee you that'll shake you to your core. So wait a minute, time out. You pray I get sick and die, brother. That, that's the devil. Okay? Then the, how that sounds coming right. out of your mouth? How's it that that's sound right. coming out of your mouth? Mm-hmm. And God's hearing that. Right. So the idea is you set yourself in agreement and you start speaking what God says. And so I'm commanding you to prophesy nothing but the word of God. So help you, God. Yeah. Okay, keep going. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Now, I told you, in the midst of you saying something in the promise of God you're believing for, and it coming to pass, there's going to be some noise, there's going to be some chaos, there's going to be some things going on. So even after the man of God spoke those things, there was a shaking, there was a noise, there was chaos, but guess what? It was need for that those things come to pass. When God is doing some things and shaking and moving on your behalf, He don't do it quietly. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be some noise. It's gonna be some folk that gonna talk about you. It's gonna be some folk that's gonna condemn you. It's gonna be some folk that's gonna criticize you. It's gonna be some folk. There's gonna be a whole yeah, lot of noise. And why are you yeah. worried about the noise? Worry about the end results. What's going to come to pass in the midst of all the fiery trials that's coming to try? You think it not strange, but know this here that you can rejoice in the midst of it. And they say, well, why are you rejoicing with all the hell that you're going through? Because I know in the end it shall come to pass, just like my God says, and it is an expected end that God's going to bring forth and manifest to me, and the kingdom shall be my manifestation. Yes, the kingdom of goodness. Go ahead. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews. And the flesh came upon them, and the skins covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Watch this here. So in other words, Ezekiel, he said something. Guess what? He stepped back. God did it, and it was was so. so. Yeah. He said it. It was so. Wait a minute. But it ain't good. He said it. It was so. But he looked back and said, but... There was no breath in them. Yeah. So he couldn't say it's, it's good yet. Okay, keep going. And he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Keep going. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Now, now he's, 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 he's trying to bring it to where it's going to be good. And listen yeah. to what God says. Not only am I going to give you life, I'm going to bring you out of the grave. And so think about this here. This is a spiritual word that is spoken yes. tonight, uh, 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 where he's, he's prophetically speaking about the children of Israel and t- talking about going back to Israel. Oh, mm-hmm. you see, you got to look at the spiritual thing about it. If that's the case, then that leaves us out. Then none of this word means anything to us. But right. seeing that we are seed of Abraham, now we are the spiritual seed of Abraham. Therefore, this here is accounted unto us. So this applies yes. to us as well. Okay. So now we can't go back to Israel. So we have yes. to have a spiritual Israel. And you know what that spiritual Israel is? The kingdom of God. Right. As we are kingdom citizens, as we believe on Christ. Mm-hmm then we have been entered into this rest that Paul talks about. Right. Not a physical rest, not in, not in the promised land, but a spiritual rest where we enter into the kingdom of God, where there is righteousness, peace, and joy. All the provisions that we need. So that, that which would be in the physical Israel is not in the spiritual Israel. So all the provisions that's there is now here. All the things that you they would need physically there right. is here. So therefore, we now... He calling us out of our grave. And so all that came through the, the man of God, the son of man, prophesying, saying those things. And it says, and it was so. And God says, by this, when I bring you out, people shall know. Go back and read it again. 
Which verse? And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Not just you, but yeah. everybody's going to know. So when, when people see what God has done in your life, what God is doing in your life, they can't help but say, that ain't nothing but God. Yeah. That ain't nothing but You know what? You <laughs> ought to hope, you ought to pray that the situation yeah. is to the point. I, I like what Rob Parsons said. He said one time, he said he wrote in his Bible, he says, Lord, I want you to do in this ministry what, uh, that which no man can give credit to a man, but they'd have to give credit to God. That whatever God does in your life, they have to step back and say, you want to take away the coincidence. Yes, well, you just got that job because you got a good education. Guess what? I never graduated. I got a third grade education. Yeah. I have this because the Lord walks with me. Right. And so he says, and ye shall know that I am mm -hmm. the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it. Oh, my said God. The Lord. He is not a man that he shall lie. If he said mm -hmm. it, he's going to do it. If he's Glory. spoken it, he's going to make it good. Mm -hmm. He said, if I've spoken it, I'm going to perform it. I am the Lord that's going to bring you out of your grave. Y'all coming up out of that grave tonight if you believe yes, you receive. Lord. I don't care what it is, if it's a grave of financial debt, if yes, it's a grave of sickness, if it's a grave of bad relationship, if it's a grave, uh, a grave of uh, children getting on your nerve. You begin to speak and prophesy to the thing and say, hey, I'm coming out of this grave. God's going to bring me out of the grave. Amen. I set yes, myself up Lord. in agreement with what God says That's concerning right. what his word says concerning me. It shall surely come to pass mm -hmm. and I'm going to speak it and say it until it is so. Hear what I said? I'm going to speak it and say it until it, it is, is so. so. And then when I when it is so, I want to look back and be able to say, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's good. good. That's, that's good. good. That's, that's good. good. That's good. Right. Is it good? Yes. That that's good. If you if you can't say it's good, you got you ain't finished. If you can't say it's good, you're not finished. Yes, if you can't say that, man, this, this body looks Lord. good. No, you you're not finished. You got to keep on working on it. And how you gonna keep on working on the building? Mm -hmm. With that mouth. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you right. don't like what you're eating, change what you're saying. Because what's coming out of your mouth is you're perpetuating, and I don't care what you say. I, I love the Lord. No, but I'm not talking about in church when you're around people and you're being all religious. I'm talking about when you're in your secret closet, yes. when that pain hitting you from left to right, and you about to knock you silly out of your mind. You don't know where you are. You don't know if you're in the day or tomorrow. And are you yeah. still able to say what the Word of God says? Because Thank the you, devil Lord. needs to hear you say what God says. Thank That's you, the Lord. only way he's going to release you and let you go. Thank you you. got to stand out. I'm telling you, somebody, somebody's coming out of the grave. I don't know. It may not be for everybody. It, you know, everybody's not going here everybody's not going to believe you still have some people that are cynical i can't believe it they're so cynical yeah <laughs> toward your god yeah <laughs> i hear what you're saying but we got yeah, to move our butt right. out the way all them mm -hmm. butts so the word of god every time you say but it's nothing but doubt and unbelief and you have canceled everything that you've said i don't care if mm -hmm. you said 50 million things great yep. toward god you bring that butt up that cancels it all mm -hmm. Because God says a little living living is the whole lump. Yep. Doubt and unbelief cannot work in operating God. So we got to have a lifestyle mm -hmm. of believing Him, a lifestyle of getting His Word in us. Yes. A lifestyle Amen. of meditating Thank His Word Lord. day and night, yes. and let it not depart from us. And it goes on and says, And He shall put His Spirit in us. That lets you know right now this is a spiritual prophetic word for those that are listening tonight because His Spirit is in you. He's placed his spirit in you. So you think that God has placed his spirit in you so you can be destroyed? There's mm -hmm. no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, he said, you shall condemn it. How are you going to condemn it? Cast it down with your words. Our weapons are not calling their might through God to the pulling down the strongholds. Right. How do you pull down the strongholds? With your mouth. How mm -hmm. do you bring forth prayer? Through your mouth. How do you enter into kingdom? With your mouth. How mm -hmm. do you enter the gates of, with praise? With your mouth. Everything yes. is done with your mouth. Everything starts with the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Guess what? That word is in you. God with you. God in you, the word. So you're going to have to speak the word. Not what you're going through. Not what you're feeling. Like you said, you got to get out your feelings. Your feelings are going to get you hurt. Your emotions will tear you down. But yep. you got to get to the place. So you know what? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him and speak his word regardless. Yes. I don't have anything to lose. Yes. I don't have anything to lose. And if I die going down in the word, I go down as a righteous man. And I want God to have this remembrance of me. Yes. And I yes. spoke nothing but his word. 
Uh, he, he, let, never let him hear you say speaking, doubting, unbelief, and, 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 and murmuring and complaining. Never let him hear you say that. Let there be a strong constitution in you to say, you know what? I'll never let yes, it be said that God heard me say anything negative toward him. Mm -hmm. I will never let, ne never let it be said that God ever heard me say anything that was of doubt and unbelief. I will never let it be said that God ever heard me murmuring and complaining. You, we got to get to that place. And I'm telling you, yes. when that becomes a lifestyle in you, I'm telling you, there's nothing yes. he won't do. You'll get healed, lick it, split. You'll get delivered, lick it, split. God will open up windows and pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. But you got to get just that adamant about your God and believe that just that way about his word concerning his relationship towards you. Now, come on now. When we was naked and wretched and undone, <laughs> worthless, one good for nothing, he died yeah. for us. How much more Amen. so if we just yeah. try to believe him, yeah. what he wouldn't do for you. Yeah. I believe yeah. he'll run through troops and leap over walls just to get that with you, believe in him for it to manifest. Mm -hmm. God so desires to see you with that you're believing him for, regardless of how you think. Mm -hmm. Man, he wants yes, to bless you Lord. more than you want to be blessed. Yes. I'm telling you, he wants to bless you more yes, than you want to be blessed. And the Lord came again. He says, this you shall know that he... Let me tell you something. Don't doubt. Just shout, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Don't doubt. Just shout, I'm, I'm coming, coming out. out. I'm coming out this grave. Amen. I'm coming Come out this grave of sickness. Grave. I'm coming out this grave of death. I'm coming out this yes, grave of, of defeat, discouragement. I'm coming out. Coming out. Matter of fact, say I'm out. I'm out. Somebody lift your hand and say I'm free. I'm, I'm free. free. I'm free. In the name of Jesus, yes. I am free. Free from sickness. Free from poverty. Free from death. Free from free from the opinions of men. Mm -hmm. Man, God, we definitely need a deliverance from that. Worried about what people say, what people think. It does not matter. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, mm -hmm. you be healed in your emotions, in your body, in your pocketbook, mm -hmm. in your relationships. Oh, you be healed. You, I prophesy to you tonight. Dry Lord bones, Jesus. you live. Yes. Everything that needs to happen concerning your finances, mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. men be touched Thank to give into your bosom. For it says, giving it shall be given unto you. Good Thank measures pressed down, shaking together, running over. Yes. Shall men give it to your bosom. I declare and decree and I command men. Men now that, that 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 are do you that God have touched their hearts that they'll be obedient to come and give it to your bosom right now for the seeds that you've sown. I command hard, the seeds of harvest to come forth now in Jesus' in mighty Jesus name. Jesus that they are being obedient. Yes. All the ones that God have assigned yes. to be the men Thank that come and give it to your bosom. That right now from the north, the south, the east, and the west, I'm commanding the winds yeah. to blow those yes. guys that if you have touched their hearts to give Thank it to you, those Lord. who have given, Lord, those of your servants that have been faithful over the giving God, they will come and give it to their bosom in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you right now that the healing be manifested. Whether it be any sickness in the body from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet, be healed in the name of the Jesus Christ of, of Jesus. Nazareth. Yes, healed Lord. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I pray right now. Holy yes. Spirit, wrestle that loved one that needs to be saved right now. Set yes. a flame of fire and burn out all the chaff and all of the chains and all of the snares Thank and all the things, the, all the holes of the enemy that is holding yes. them in that bondage. I Thank break the bound, the chains of bondage right now in Jesus' mighty yes. name. I release God, the spirit of the anointing that destroy the yoke and to remove the burden, that burden of alcoholism, that burden of addiction, that burden of God of suicide. I command it to be broken in yes. Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of the living God, go forth and be the living life that brings forth life into that body. And Jesus, and reckon with them, reconcile them back to God, deal with them where they are, and cause them to come into repentance, Lord. Let their hearts be touched, oh God, and be pliable to receive your word, to receive your spirit, Lord. That they may cry and say, what must I do to be saved and be born again by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' mighty name. Then wash them and cleanse them, oh God. And then set their feet on straight, oh God, and make them right, oh God, in Jesus' in mighty name. Jesus name. We give you praise we give you glory, yes, we give you honor. Yes. Stay that course. Know Thank that God's going to bring that thing to pass. Jesus. There is no, there is no option. Yes. There is no Thank option. Jesus. I always win. Yes. Don't doubt. Just Lord, shout. Coming out. Jesus. Amen. Amen. We love you. We'll see you next Sunday. Yes.